justement euh, l'accès aux soins euh, en Syrie. Et on a voulu, pour euh, conforter cette, 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 cette information, euh, collecter des... Et vers moi, si vous voulez, en plus. Merci. I was in the street. Usually, when there's a raid on the city, they shoot randomly and indiscriminately at everyone, old men, children, or women. Any moving person was a target. I was wounded in my hand. Other people were wounded too. After the initial treatment, I was moved to another house for safety reasons. I was treated with a very basic medical kit by a nurse. He just had needles, thread and scissors. I was begging for an anaesthetic, but he didn't have any. When he pulled the bullet out of my thigh, he touched the bone, and I screamed in pain. I'm a Syrian doctor. I was treating the wounded in Syria. It's difficult. For doctors, the risk of being arrested is very high. But despite that, many are putting their lives in danger in order to fulfill their duty as doctors. I saw a lot of torture in the detention center. There were 230 of us crammed into a small room. There were old people and doctors amongst us. I asked a doctor how he came to be there. He replied, just like you, son. With the conflict in Libya ending, many detainees were in need of surgical care, physiotherapy and psychological support. Médecins Sans Frontières doctors and psychologists, who had been working in this detention centre daily since the beginning of August 2011, had grown increasingly concerned. So it was very um, possible to distinguish the kind of wounds that we were seeing after the interrogations from the kinds of wounds that we would see uh, as a result of the conflict. So we had patients presenting themselves with bruises across their body. Um, we also had patients with uh, tissue necrosis due to electroshocks and also cigarette burns. So for the MSF teams on the ground and the medical teams, it was very easy to distinguish between those two types of patients. There was no confusion possible. In total, MSF treated 115 detainees who had torture-related wounds. The situation was unacceptable for MSF, who saw its work being instrumentalized, used to put detainees back on their feet between two interrogations. In January, MSF informed Misrata's authorities of the situation and decided to suspend its medical activities in the town's detention centers. For a long time, traditional medicine was the only treatment easily available in southern Bougainville. Access to healthcare was made difficult by the ongoing conflict, as well as difficulties in transport and supplying medical facilities. After a 10-year absence from the region, MSF decided to return to support the health centre in Bouin, in southern Bougainville, in April 2011. MSF is supporting the health centre of Bouin with a comprehensive approach, um, but focusing on maternal and child health. So we are working alongside with the Division of Health here and building the capacity of the staff members. We practically implemented a 24-hour service for safe delivery in the hospital. The program also focuses on tuberculosis. Treatment for the disease is being scaled up and a new TB ward is to be built soon. To reach patients quicker, MSF also plans to expand its activities to five smaller health centres in the district. This 16-year-old boy was injured at the end of December when a bomb exploded next to a private clinic in the town of Hangu. The MSF surgical teams had to amputate his hand. We see a lot of trauma cases. 
road accidents and shootings. Second comes infections, digestive and pulmonary infections. And third comes child mortality and morbidity. In 2011, MSF treated 20,000 patients in Hangu, including many mothers. Maternal mortality is a major problem here. An MSF midwife has been working in the hospital's mother and child health center since last May to train and provide support to the staff, in particular during complicated births. In Swaziland, 25% of young adults are HIV positive. Without access to treatment, they will not live long. Treatment needs to be reorganized in order to reach the more isolated communities. Task shifting is designed to achieve this by transferring certain skills from doctors to nurses and from nurses to laboratory or pharmacy assistants. People from the local community are also included in the care process. Before we came into Swaziland, it was only doctors that were prescribing ARVs. But knowing that we had challenges with the presence of doctors who were only in the health centers, they couldn't go to the clinics where the majority of the people live, we felt it was necessary to train the nurses, just like it has been done in other countries in the sub-Saharan region, to initiate ARVs. The system prevents patients having to travel long and costly distances to the hospital. In collaboration with the Ministry of Health, MSF is currently treating HIV AIDS and tuberculosis patients in 22 clinics in the Shiselwini region. <laughs> 